Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I am going to teach you a melody in the right hand and then we are going to look at a lot of arpeggio techniques to gradually develop our hand coordination and accompaniment skills on the piano. What I mean by gradually is we are going to start with just two note arpeggios, then go to three notes and then all the way to four notes. And while we are at it, we'll also build on the speeds of the arpeggios. So by doing these incremental variations in the left hand, the right hand will hold its ground or should hold its ground and thus you're going to really build up your hand independence. So for those of you who like arpeggios, I'm sure you all do, myself included, uh, do stay tuned to the very end because we are going to do a bunch of patterns that you can use not only for this melody but for a lot of songs hopefully. So before we get started, it'll be awesome if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell for regular notifications. Also, the notation for all these exercises, including my handwritten notes, all the arpeggio variations are going to be found on our Patreon page. You can get yourself a copy for just $5 a month. And that doesn't only give you this, it gives you all of our other lecture, supplementary notes, MIDI files, and so on and so forth. Let's get cracking. So let's first learn the melody with the correct fingering. It's on the G major scale. One sharp, namely your F sharp, so do get that down. And the melody you heard in the beginning was... Let's just take that system first. And we start with our thumb. And keep it like this. You, Some people will go the pinky on D, but then there's a higher note coming up, which is E. So I would do ring on D. And then you play the ring again with your with C. And pinky on E. So you're, you are using the ring finger a lot in this. Let's get those two bars really well with the pulse so it's, your hand is a bit more wider for this melody it's not think of it as here rather than here again and the melodies have similar rhythms so I think you can learn right next coming moving forward so I could do I could do middle finger on F and then thumb on G middle finger index thumb and then you you have the opportunity to start the same melody on the index finger so let me do that third and fourth bar again so middle finger may be here uh, will be here rather <clears throat> in the middle thumb index mm, middle mm, mm, middle mm. so the crossing over points let's get that let's do the whole story again then middle finger cross the middle mm, end with a the thumb then start on the index and then you can flip out and bring back your thumb there. Next. Middle. Middle. Thumb index. Right? Middle. Hmm. So let's now bring in the left hand. The left hand plays simple chords. Uh, we are just going to choose the 1, 4 and 5. G major, C major, D major. And we'll incrementally start gaining all the notes of the chords and bringing some, in, some nice arpeggio patterns. Do stay tuned till the very end. There are some very interesting patterns which I have in store for you. So the left hand to start us off, let's just look at simple chord roots. Let's start with the tonic, which is G. That's a nice way to start. The challenge here is you have to play this as 
pulse notes maybe before you do the pulse you could consider just semi briefs or whole notes you know and then upgrade and i'll show you the chords start g going to c c next chord is d d major maybe c minim g minim again again c at the second bar d c now if you get bored with whole note rhythms you can also do half note rhythms that last for two counts each right again still g still c d d c okay and another nice thing to do before we move to our arpeggios is to get acquainted with the pulse or crotchets or quarter notes 1 2 3 let's give it a go c D D C G Na re 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 Ta ra ra re 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 ra C Ta ra ra D C So the first technique for the left hand to grow from here would be instead of just playing the single root each of these chords g major c major d major will have notes obviously it is not just g so g major has g b d c major is c e g d major is d f sharp a so let's utilize the notes of those chords now but let's not do the triad which is three notes initially let's just do fifths So that would be G D G D. There we go. So this is your first pattern. You may not want to call it an arpeggio pattern. Just call it a rhythm pattern in the left. So now the trick here is at the time of hitting B. B would be at beat one of the bar, right? So that's where you align your pinky or the root note. to play the chord which is g the root of the chord g and i'm starting off with maybe just simple crotchets with the fifths you should do let's do that again a bit slowly d C fifth, C fifth, D fifth, C G again. Little faster. C major. Going to D major. Stay on D. C major. G major. and that's the case closed there so this is a good pattern and just to add some value to this if you'd like instead of going root fifth upper you can do and you can kind of do the descending fifth if you like Okay, or do the ascending fifth, where the fifth comes up. So these are the two use cases of the fifth. You can either go up or you can go down. I would prefer start with going up, and if you get that pretty well, then move into the lower fifth. So it's pretty much the same note D for G. G's fifth is D, but you can play the D either upper or lower. There we go. So now let's get into the business end of the tutorial which is some arpeggio patterns as I promised in the beginning. The first arpeggio pattern now for all of them we'll use the triad. So now we'll open it out instead of playing 
that or just that we'll play the whole chord ta ra ra re 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 so we'll bring in the whole triad but the way we are playing it would be two quavers and a crotchet this is the first pattern which i think you can play with that melody so a good way to start this to get the independence would be to sing and then comp it on the piano so ta ra 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 ta ra ra ta ra is the pick up and ta is where it starts ta ra ra ri re ra ra going to c major ta ra ra ri re then d ta ra 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 ti do do ro 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 and then repeat ta ra ri 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 before you get the piano going na 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 be able to sing it ta ra ri ra ri ri ra 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 ri na and melody repeat D major Come back to G major. So that's triad version number 1. Now triad version number 2 will just start with a long one and then end with two short ones. The first one was short short long. Short short long. Now I'm trying to do long short short. Short short meaning two quavers. Ta ra ta ra ra ri ri ru ru ta ra 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 i ra 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 alla repeat work on the independence so maybe slow it down a bit repeat So you have the two patterns first off and two and three and two and then we have long short short three and four and one and two and three okay now let's move into a very popular arpeggio pattern for almost any kind of solo piano setting if you're playing a ballad or a pop song or a rock song or anything this is a good starting pattern to kind of make it work no matter what Or especially if you are on the 4 by 4 framework if you take it visually the way i am calling this out is l h m h low high middle high low now you could decide at this stage whether you'd like to play the arpeggio lower it may sound a bit muddy or a bit too busy because of the bass note so you could octave it to the treble area just the g below the middle c now this is the pattern if i take g major chord it'll be g d b d l h m h so if you follow the same process to the c major chord it would kind of be c the same story l h m h c g e g if you do it for the d major chord d f sharp a d a f sharp a so this is the pattern L H M. So let's do it with the chord changes. Just for fun, I'm moving the melody an octave higher, just for you to hear the left hand a bit better. So, three. It's a good practice to probably start with the arpeggio, then bring in the melody. I told you earlier, sing before you play, but for now, I'll just play. Ta ra ra ri 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 slowly. Ta ra ri 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 ru. Ta ra. Now you could use inversions or the roots. Again, C. Going to D. 
C major so this is the pattern so you can use this for a lot of things It's a nice pattern to use for a lot of lot of music. <clears throat> so if you're a solo piano player, if you want to do the melody and the chord pattern in this hand, you'll have to bank something, right? So inevitably, the chords and the chord pattern should be sort of converted in uh, and made into a into an instinct for your for your mind. So that's L H M H. I'd like you to bank that. practice it and also explore it not only with this tune but with tunes of your own or any song that you are learning uh, currently okay now let's take lhmh a little forward it it to me sounds a bit boring cuz it it's the same it it starts sounding very monotonous or predictable so easy trick to make this a bit more interesting is to add an octave at the top end by playing l h m h l h m h l h m and i'm calling it as l dash because it's the octave of that low note sa pa ga pa sa pa ga pa sa pa ga pa sa pa ga pa l h m h okay so it provides that variety one and two and th th with some singing ta ra ra ri ri ra ra ta ra ra ri 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 ra la ra 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 ri ro ra de ra ru da ta ra ri 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 ru ru ta ra ri to change to the next chord You need to kind of anticipate the change. So if you're going from G to C, na 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 na, you need to get that finger ready to hit on C. Or else you could even consider inversions. Ta na 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 na, ta ra ra ri ri, to make life easier. Of course, the root will then be G, which sounds quite nice. Ta ra ri ra. So for now start with root so that the roots sound like roots in the left hand so this is l h m h with the octave so let's do that again with the piano octave Now for that na na because it's a quick change na na we've notated it just as l h m h l h m h because you don't have the time to go to the higher octave, right, guys? So we've made our arpeggio patterns hopefully a lot more sophisticated now. But moving forward, you can also just take the same patterns that we've learned just now, the l h m h with the octave displacement, and just play those as semi quavers or sixteenth notes. So then your time feel would be one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three. So one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Let's just do L H M H first. There we go. Ta ra ra ri ra ra ra. Ta ra ri ri ru ru ru. Ta ra ra. See, it's on the sixteenth note feel. One e and a two e and a three e and the melody. L H M H. But a faster version. See, and as always, you can take the same L H M H and add the octave to displace it. Right, so same thing we learned earlier. Earlier we did one and two and three and four and eighth notes. Now we are speeding up the left hand ever so slightly to do. 16s 
1 e and 2 e and 3 e so whole melody okay so all the variations again from the top would be first off you can be very happy playing just chord roots in either semi breves whole notes uh, minims or half notes or else crotchets quarter notes just the chord roots then we did fifths Then after this we did our basic triad arpeggios. First off we did short short long, short short long. Then we did long, short short long, short short long, short short. Then we did the famous L H M H go to arpeggio, H M H L H M. Then we added that octave flavor to create some interest. And then finally we just sped the LHMH up uh, including the octave displaced version by playing 16th notes instead of 8th notes. There we go. So you can find all of this notated in a very stepwise manner so you can follow it and we don't have time in this video to do other scales but I would always encourage you to practice this drill on as many scales as possible just to get you started we'll have this notated in my handwritten notes with the scale degrees so we would put it out as Ta -ra 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 will be 1 2 3 5 3 2 1 in terms of scale degrees or if you know your <clears throat> Or if you know your Indian swaras, it will be Sarega Pagaresa, right? So we'll have that written down. Also in our staff notation, we've put one more scale for you, F major. So uh, you can practice. And you might have also heard me playing it with a little bit of embellishments. These are all called as grace notes or uh, just colors you add to notes, you know, slides, trills, turns, appoggiaturas. I've done all of this in a separate lesson. We link that for you in the description. Do check it out. You can learn all about this. And if you'd like to learn something from this lesson, if you have some other doubts, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll be happy to plan something along those lines. Thanks a ton for watching the video. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do consider supporting us on Patreon as well. Cheers and catch you in the next one.